Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. I'm Kristen Phillips. I'm the Regional Agronomist for Manitoba with the Canola Council of Canada. All right, and we are at Canalab 13 here at Brandon, and uh, incredibly interesting station here is the Precision Seeding Station. Uh, and we are looking at planters and, and talking about uh, some of the pros and cons between a planter and say an air drill um, or an air seeder. Can you just run through sort of how we're framing that discussion of, of what maybe the Canola Council has looked at as well as what's sort of ongoing? Sure. Um, so, you know, the Canola Council is very much science-based and so there's lots of research that has been occurring but we don't have anything with solid results. So basically everything we have so far is preliminary. Uh, you know, some of the pros of a planter uh, that we may see are, you know, better yields, um, reduced costs because you can, we, we are assuming you're going to be able to reduce your seeding rate. Um, we're also seeing better germination and emergence of the actual plant and so that's getting the plant off to a better start because you're getting that precise seed placement. And uh, we're actually seeing you know, less disease in the crop that's planted with a planter uh, because we're getting better air throw throughout the canopy. And then, so what are some of the drawbacks? Uh, you know, some of the cons is definitely the cost or the investment of a planter as most guys don't have a planter on their farm unless they're doing some other row crops. Um, a concern about, you know, the weed pressure that you're having early in the season because the crop does have further row spacing. Uh, you can actually see more weed pressure, which can cause issues. Uh, we also see um, that, that lean in the crop because the crop is further apart. Um, there tends to get a, a lean or a bend in the crop. So those are some of the preliminary results that we're seeing in the trials. Uh, we are going to see lots more research come out in the next few years because this is definitely something producers are interested in. All right, we're here with Andrew Delgarno with Pendale Farms. You farm at Newdale, Manitoba? That's so? right, yep. All right, and we're at Canalab 13, and we are talking about uh, planters versus seeders, and you've run a demo on your farm, and, and so there's lots of interest in that about comparing the job that you do. And uh, you mentioned there's, there was sort of one trumping factor to any of this, and what was that? That's right, Lindsay. If you look at the chart here, you can see that the John Deere and the Seedhawk drills beat the planter by a fair bit in 2013. The biggest factor in 2013 is that these first ones were sowed on the 17th of May. On the 19th of May, we had a nice gentle quarter inch rain, nice warm May rain that everybody looks forward to at seeding time. The planter never showed up in the field until the 21st of May and then we didn't get any more rain for two weeks. So I think one of the big reasons why you see these yields so low is that lack of moisture at seeding time. Right, so, so certainly, I mean, in this discussion of comparing a planter to a seeder, timing is still gonna trump. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Timing and weather are your two big factors. If, right. if the soil's ready to go and the weather conditions are, are warranting that you should go, you should be out there. It doesn't matter which machine you use. Right, and, uh, and so certainly if you've, if you've got a planter and a seeder, get the seeder out there if it's time to go. Absolutely. Yeah, if, 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 you're, uh, if you're in corn and soybean country and your planter is still busy putting corn and soybeans in the ground and your air drill's sitting, get going on canola. Now, uh, also in looking at this, you said there was a dramatic difference uh, between the swath timing uh, at the different seeding rates. Tell us about that. That's right. If you look at the seed hawk here, you can see from two pounds an acre up to six pounds an acre. By flowering, there was one day difference between each of those rates. So a total of five days difference across the spectrum there. And that was at flowering time. By the time we got to swathing, we were up to two days difference between each of those. So that's 10 days difference from when we swathed the six pound per acre, which was the earliest, until the two pounds per acre. And that's because the two pounds takes longer to branch, longer to fill in before it starts to flower. And depending on the area where you're from, uh, our area is one of the shorter growing seasons in Manitoba. 10 days difference at the first of September could be a huge difference in yield, depending on when that first frost comes. 